Yes, so what has happened to Sky Sports Boxing then, eh? The sporting media powerhouse. What was once an unstoppable force in the world of boxing now seems to be somewhat left behind. Where has the glitz and glamour gone? Where have all the big fights gone? And what lies in store for old Ben Shalom as the big dogs continue to thrive? Let's peer into the crack of the Sky Sports and Boxer fiasco Rapid. So then, as we know, Sky Sports has always been a beast of sporting TV, from the Grand Prix to the golf to the women's volleyball. Fucking blinding watch that is. But yes, they've always got it covered. And with the rise of Fast Car Ready from 2010 onwards, the British boxing scene was consumed by the media giant as well. Oh yes. The glory years pretty much began with Marv vs. Groves, and if anything, Howard Foster had a lot to do with it as well. He said, nah, I'm sorry my little ginger ninja, me Uber's outside, I've got to get out of here a bit sharpish, let's end it there, fuck it. And we all went, no, you're fucking joking, how would me old son then bosh? Before we knew it, we were at Wembley Stadium, lovely jubbly, and who was on the undercard? Yes, Anthony Joshua, who went on to captivate the heavyweight scene. The wheels were in motion, and the man in the driving seat was the outspoken and brash old fast car, Edward. Yes, Mr. Men's Hell front cover, look at me fucking bicep, if I could turn quick enough, I'd shag myself. Yes, he may unleash a colossal amount of bollocks from time to time, but he plays the promoter game perfectly, and he got us all doubling excited for a matchroom card. In a nutshell, Sky Sports had the perfect frontman, a blinding salesman, a brilliant talker and a little bit of controversy thrown in as well. And through the AJ glory years, the sprinkling of big personalities like Tony Bellew, David Hay, Chisora and White and many others, it all seemed to create a real glitz and glamour feel. Yes, Sky Sports boxing was pure entertainment, absolutely thrilling and the place to be on a Saturday night. But then... We have made the monumental decision to sign a new historic landmark five-year boxing deal with sports streaming giant DAZN in the UK. Yeah, so Edward said, say less cuz, I'll see you later. It was off to try and take over the world with DASNY and their billions, leaving the legendary Adam Smith and Johnny Nelson thinking, what do we fucking do now then? Who really was capable of filling the Edward void? Who could match Edward's big personality, his ruthless promoting skills and accessibility to the public? There was only one man for the job. Yes. So it was Ben Shalom now in the driving seat with the golden ticket to a huge boxing audience predominantly created by Matchroom. But who really is old Benny boy I hear you ask? Well he grew up in Manchester, he graduated with a law degree but only ever had aspirations to work in boxing. He knew all there was to know about the sport as well as the business other than how to win a fucking purse bid, bloody hell, we'll come back to that in a minute. But yes, full credit to Ben, he very nobly started from the very bottom. Borrowing 10 grand to obtain his boxing licence at just 23 years old and going on to host tournaments wherever he was able. He worked his absolute nuts off just to break even most of the time, but it soon paid off, eventually getting decent exposure, landing his first TV deal with Five Spike, promoting his very own creation, the gritty and interesting Ultimate Boxer Tournament. And yes, it turned out to be a small success, you know, with seven shows being broadcast, each show differing in weight class from welterweight to heavyweight, and the winners receiving a contract and life-changing money. Then as Edward parted ways with Sky, the stars aligned for Benny Boy as he received a nod from Adam Smith to take over the boxing platform. A four-year deal and a hefty budget reportedly around 32 million to pull in the names to rival the matchroom stable they just lost. He landed right on his feet, but you gotta say a bloody good effort from old Shalomi. Fair play, very inspiring. So the very beginnings of Boxer and Sky started with an absolute bang. Before we knew it, some decent names floated their way, including Eubank Jr., Huey Fury, Avenesian and React 4. Then after merely four months since their first show, boxing fans had the luxury of Eubank vs. Willie Williams, Khan vs. Brooke, and Taylor vs. Catrall. Catrall was fucking robbed in that fight. We said, oi, oi, this is all right, and it looked lively, Edward. You better stop flexing them biceps and pull your fucking finger out, bruv. Benny boy's all up in your grill. Then, interestingly, some upcoming names even began to get poached. We all remember Lawrence Acoli and his rough old split from Team Hearn to become the face of Sky Sports Boxing, as well as Buatzi and Chris Billam Smith. Heavyweight wise, they got Parker on board, as well as Bacoli with Fraser Clark, the very credible Olympian, starting out his journey with the new players in town. Things were shaping up nicely, it was all going so cushy. And then, it sort of went a bit, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. 
And here we are. So then, yeah, it was a blinding start from Boxer, some absolutely stellar signings on paper, and don't get me wrong, some decent fights in there as well. Eubank Smith, Shields Marshall, Billum Smith and Akoli can't fault them at all. But as a whole, when you read the comments and follow all the boxing fans like I do, because I'm a fucking sad act, you can't help but get the sense of fans being pretty underwhelmed by Boxer shows in recent times. So what's the issue then? Well, firstly, it could all come back to something Adam Smith said when Boxer first signed up with Sky. He's a different character to Eddie, you know, he's he's not going to be in front and centre, he's going to, you know, let the fighters do that and I think the key with this message is that the fighters are going to be, you know, be the stories and the stars. Yeah, so that has pretty much been the case with Ben and Boxer, he has kind of sat back from a promotional standpoint and let the fighters and the fights do all the talking in the ring. Now, I'm not digging Ben out because he's probably a lovely bloke, he's never going to have that Eddie Hearn or Don King style of promoting, but the big question is, is it enough to let the fighters and the fights do the talking. It's okay with Calm Brook and Eubank Smith because they sell themselves, anyone could promote them, but what about the fights that don't really sell? Now Eddie ain't everyone's cup of tea, but he certainly knows how to ram fights down your throats. He gives you a reason to watch it, whether it's a next gen or a domestic dust up, he can create a razzmatazz around most things. But with Boxer, most of the time, you don't really get that same inspiration. Take Buatzi Aziz. Now Buatzi's a brilliant fighter, but he's not a very big talker. The same for Aziz, and that's alright, that's who they are. However, in my pointless opinion, if you've got quiet fighters like these two, you kinda need to balance it up with a loudmouth promoter like Frank already to shove it in our faces why we need to watch these guys. The sad truth is, the fighters and their ability can't always be relied on to do the talking. If that were the case, then Lomachenko would sell thousands more tickets than Chisora, but he don't. And you know, okay, the injury stalled the Buatsi Dan Aziz fight, yeah, some people ain't too sure about that, but okay, whatever. However, with the reschedule, it's moved from originally being at the O2 with a 20,000 seat capacity to the OVO Arena that has a 12,500 seat capacity. They've even had longer to promote it, and yet still it's had to downsize. Surely that wouldn't have happened if the fight was promoted right. And yet it's a great fight. But talking of great fights, let's be honest, there's been hardly any for the likes of Akoli, Buatsi, React Poor and Fraser. A clock. Okay, well, a Coley and Billum Smith on paper was good. It fucking weren't to watch, but I suppose a decent domestic fight for a world title. But outside of this, I mean, React Paul's been fighting the cast of the fucking Goonies most of the time in leisure centres, and I'm still frazzled why Fraser Clark pulled out the purse bids for the Wardley fight, as well as React Paul pulling out of the purse bids for the Opatia fight. Bloody hell, why? Go for greatness, that's what you're in the sport for, bruv. But yeah, Boxer pulling out of these purse bids, it ain't really been a good look, has it? And when Boxer have started. Their intentions were to work with everybody. But again, this ain't really come to fruition because they won't touch matchroom with a barge pole and Queensbury very rarely. So most of the fights are in-house. They get a lot of criticism for the undercards being poor, but if they did work with other promoters, maybe they could beef out the undercards more. But yeah, they probably won't. Maybe this lack of collaboration is why the likes of Cattrall, Hunter and Parker all left pretty much immediately once they got signed. I don't know. But also nowadays, old Benny Boy doesn't really do many interviews whatsoever, and I don't really understand that either. I personally listen to Frank and Eddie's regular interviews, not to hear about Eddie's workout routine or him coating off Parsons wearing a dodgy fucking jumper, big up Parsons, but I always watch them to hear what fights are being made, and why they're going to be bangers. So with Ben being elusive, how do we know what's cracking? in the world of Boxer and Sky Sports Boxing, we fucking don't do we? And at the end of the day, everyone knew when there was a Don King show in town, and you just don't really get that feeling often with a Boxer show. And one man who clearly ain't got that feeling is the double excellent Turkey. How comes Boxer ain't a part of the Saudi game? There's plenty of money and opportunities over there at the minute. It's all a bit puzzling. And finally, to end my pointless fucking waffle. Like I say, I'm not having a go, I'm just a double big boxing fan. I want Sky Sports and Ben Shalom to succeed because I love boxing. I love their fighters and I want to see their fighters in great fights. But they can't become great fighters until they're in great fights. That's the dilemma. Maybe they're missing a bit of that Adam Smith touch, God bless him, I don't know. But then again, if you want to take a backward step and stay behind the scenes, Benny Boy, then get Sam Jones in there, put him out in front, that would be blinding. He could sell a fridge to a fucking polar bear, that man. Anyway, it's all in my pointless opinion, but come on, Shalom, just get our nipples a little bit more erect, bruv, that's all. It's all bear love and ting, say less fam. So yes, tell me your thoughts below, and if I'm talking bollocks, just say I'm talking bollocks i love talking bollocks but thank you for watching you're all absolutely blinding toodle pit for now bosh